it's that time of year again, time when the studies come out and say that low carb is going to cause insulin resistance and going to ruin your life. It really is a strange time that we're living in and not because there's demonization of specific diets. I mean, that's kind of been going on for a while, but what's so interesting is that studies are even becoming sensationalized now. They're becoming sort of social media. Now, this study is very interesting because it essentially finds that a low carb diet is going to make you insulin resistant and cause all kinds of glucose dysregulation. Now, it's kind of expected that on social media we might have like sensationalized titles or descriptions, but it's kind of weird that even on PubMed and even in these studies nowadays, we're seeing these like hints of tribalism and sort of this sensationalized explanation of studies. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of really good studies out there that understand nuance. Like if you look at a high carb diet versus a low carb diet, there's benefits to both and you can have a nuanced discussion. But when there's tribalism, there's a serious problem. So what's up with this study? Well, this study's aim was to see if a low carb diet would impact normal weight people positively or negatively. It's pretty darn interesting what they found. After today's video, I popped a link down below for House of Macadamia. If you want to check them out, that's a 20% off discount link with whatever you want at their site. So whatever you want, whether it's macadamia nuts, sugar-free chocolate-covered macadamia nuts, macadamia nut bars, whether you want to try their new macadamia nut oil, they have some macadamia nut creamers coming out. Not only do you get 20% off, you get a free bottle of cold-pressed macadamia nut oil. They are harvesting in South Africa. The profits help benefit the farmers. The farmers actually benefit from this, which is really cool. And everything is harvested and grown and then processed less than an hour from each other. So it's as fresh as fresh can get, and you're gonna find that it's probably the best darn bargain you're gonna find on macadamia nuts. So that link is down below using that code. So this study starts out by mentioning that a lower carb diet works tremendously well for overweight people. That's great, it really does mention that. But then it says, the research is lacking in normal weight people, which I agree. I think that's true, and I'm all for this kind of study to investigate that. But here's where we start to run into issues. How does the study look? Well, what they did is they took 120 people and they had them log and weigh their food for seven days. Okay, it was observational. So they said, we're gonna have you write down and log what you eat. Okay, I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but there's one problem that kind of comes to mind. Most people can't even balance a checkbook let alone be able to actually log their food accurately with how much they ate and accurately weigh their food. Let alone, you're taking a snapshot for seven days. That does not dictate someone's entire diet. Anyhow, I digress. Then they divided them into three groups based upon what they ate over seven days. You're gonna get a kick out of this. The low carb group ate less than 45% carbohydrates. Uh, I know high-level professional CrossFit athletes that consider themselves moderate to high-carb athletes and they eat 40 or 45 percent carbohydrates. And this classification puts those in a low-carb category. Anyhow, then the moderate carbohydrate was 45 to 65 percent and the high-carbohydrate group was anyone that ate over 65 percent carbohydrates. Then what they did is they monitored their blood for inflammation, also what is called a HOMA IR, looking at their uh, insulin resistance essentially, and their HOMA beta cell function, seeing the insulin resistance based upon their pancreatic beta cells and how those functioned well. Well, the findings, this is what everyone took to the bank. So the findings were, if you do a low carb diet, you end up with dysregulated glucose, dysregulated HOMA IR, HOMA beta cell function, increase C-peptide, which leads to increased inflammation. So case in point, boom, low carb is going to make you inflamed and it's going to mess up your glucose. High carb is better. That's the snapshot that everyone shares on social media saying, we told you, we told you, we told you. Hmm, let's pick this apart a little bit. Okay, you're gonna crack up over this. Here's what's flipping wild. First of all, as I already mentioned, they looked at their diet over seven days and they were all self-reporting it. So it's like if I told you, hey, Bob, I want you to write down what you eat for the next seven days. And that is going to be a picture of your entire life. No, it's seven days. Okay, now, additionally, the blood work that they did, 
Nowhere in the study did they mention that they ever did blood work beforehand. They only did blood work after the seven days. So if, they, if that is the case, then that means that your entire life is going to matter, not just the last seven days. So even if you ate nothing but broccoli and spinach and chicken and olive oil for seven days, if your entire 35 years prior to that you were eating Twinkies and funnel cakes, you're gonna have some messed up blood work. So in this logic, broccoli and spinach and chicken and olive oil is going to make you insulin resistant. See where I'm going with this? It's pretty messed up. Now the other problem with this study is the one that you probably figured out already and I slightly mentioned. Uh, anything less than 45% carbs? Well, let me highlight something. Ordinarily, I would say, sure, this is you know broken down into these three groups and that's the lowest carb group. Sure, let's call it low carb. Except for the fact that this study deliberately mentions keto and Atkins. So if you're going to play the keto and Atkins card, if you're going to create some tribalistic, dogmatic type of conclusion that's about keto and Atkins, with all due respect, stay in your dang lane and make sure you're looking at people that are actually eating maybe less than 10% of their diet as carbohydrates so that it's actually accurate. Because you can do a lot of damage with 45% carbohydrates. If you're eating nothing but Sour Patch Kids and Snickers, but that's 45% of your carbohydrates, trust me, you can still mess yourself up. Then there's the physical activity piece. I don't have as much of a problem with this. They use what's called an accelerometer which is about 80 to 90% accurate, but that still leaves a potential 20% delta for physical activity. So without diving into that too much, essentially it just means that they probably didn't get an accurate representation of their physical activity. Okay, now let's look at the dietary assessment piece. Again, they had people monitor for seven days. It doesn't factor in anything they ate before that. Not at all. So again, like everything that they wrote down for seven days, it also could have been completely misconstrued. The people, since it's observational and they knew the kind of study they were going into, could have absolutely like reduced their carb intake for the study. You have to be very, very careful with these observational studies. Now there's a huge piece we have to look into. These are confounding factors. Really good papers adjust for confounding factors. They adjust for confounders. Crappy papers tend to not. Okay, or just ones that jump to a conclusion that just want to get sensationalized and, and spread all over social media. That tends to happen too. But here's what you have to look at. The study did not look at sleep. Sleep is being demonstrated to be one of the most powerful drivers of glucose dysregulation. So nowhere do we see sleep patterns at all. Now you're gonna get a kick out of this. There wasn't any carb nuance whatsoever. They did not separate fiber from Sour Patch Kids, from a Snickers bar. They didn't break down the carbohydrates into anything, fruit. It was just carbs, not net carbs, nothing, just carbs. So Billy Bob could have been eating 45% of his carbohydrates from Snickers bars and Mary Jane could have been eating 45% of her carbohydrates from broccoli and psyllium husk. Like there's serious nuance there. Okay, I understand what's going on here. But we cannot in the same breath say fiber is important, fiber is important, fiber is important, and then group it together with all carbs. It's not the same. The same situation with fat. We didn't take any consideration into fat intake, right? So 45% carbohydrates, but maybe they were eating all saturated fat, which unfortunately, I know these are probably low carb people watching this video, so I get it, but saturated fat in abundance can lead to lipotoxicity, there are serious bodies of evidence that suggest that high amounts of saturated fat can affect insulin resistance. So it doesn't take a look at, well, are they eating olive oil or are they eating pure lard? Like what's going on? Are they eating coconut oil? Or are they eating macadamia nut oil? What's going on? These fats influence insulin resistance almost just as much as carbohydrates do. Carbohydrates certainly impact blood glucose and your overall insulin resistance but fat impacts the fatty liver that impacts how we actually regulate insulin in the body. Bottom line is I understand what they're trying to do, but we cannot be treating this like it's the gospel. 
We have to absolutely look with dietary nuance and we have to understand the whole equation and we absolutely positively cannot rely on people to track their own food properly. I will see you tomorrow.